I will concentrate on one sentence. Remember your humanity and forget the rest. Accepting Nobel Peace Prize at that end, both for himself and for uh, uh, Pagwash, uh, Joe Rothblatt said, war has to be eliminated. Okay, now, how much have we achieved? Uh, one way of measuring that is looking at the doomsday clock, which appear from 1947 until today, on the front page of the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientist. It started with seven minutes, it fluctuated back and forth, and now is at 100 seconds. Worse ever, and it is for three years already, and it is before the Ukrainian war started. So it is actually quite, quite serious. Uh, another document that has been uh, quoted is the declaration of the General Assembly of the UN transform our world from 2015, uh, all in other words, uh, uh, sustainable development goals. Did we make progress there? Uh, clearly, as was also discussed this morning, the current world is the best ever. There is no doubt about that. When, and you can prove it in three sim by three simple uh, numbers. Number one is uh, our life expectancy is considerably longer than it ever was and keeps increasing. The number of, uh, or the percentage of uh, people who are hungry and poverty is decreasing. So this is certainly a good indication. But since I uh, mentioned the Sustainable Development Goals Declaration, let me say that I find it uh, very disturbing that there is among uh, all uh, goals, there is no mentioning of war no ideas, and war should be explicitly formulated as the goal if we want uh, to remember our humanity, to save our humanity. Uh, if we look at this number, that w where we are now, if we look at the situation that after the Second World War, we had numerous wars uh, from Korea all the way now to Ukrainian. Uh, and listen to what uh, General Colin Powell said, that among all of these wars, none achieved its uh, desired objective. So the war are, according to him, and I fully agree, totally useless. They absolutely are there uh, providing no solution for any of the problems. If we look uh, in a general picture, if we look at the global world, then none of the problems that really we humankind are faced with can be solved by war. As a matter of fact, War is our only augmenting any problems that exist. Uh, and actually, we do need global solutions. Uh, we need, as a matter of fact, global actions. We need the global world to come and in a united way act. And maybe, in spite of all of the criticism, the UN system built 
by that is true, the victors of the uh, Second World War, but still those who rather judiciously built the system, which is the only thing we have now representing some types of global governance. Should it be improved? Definitely. Uh, should it be considerably improved? Definitely. So, when we look at the sentence from the Russell Einstein Manifesto, we really are not remembering humanity. We are hurting humanity in all possible ways. Uh, definitely, the worst case is war. Senseless, terrible, as it is now in Ukraine. And uh, let me just uh, uh, mention the comparison of the war in Ukraine with uh, the Cuban crisis. The Cuban crisis lasted about 30 days. Here we have the war, which is lasting already more than what it is, eight months. And it does not show that it will end soon. The Cuban crisis actually uh, did not affect the doomsday clock, partly because the Cuban crisis was in October and the clock is set in, at the beginning of the year. So at the beginning of 62, it was already everything was, uh, was good. And uh, at the beginning of 63, everything was over. Uh, during the Cuban War, we had a case of a rather disobedient Russian officer, Vasily Arhipov, who refused to use uh, nuclear weapons that his submarine has. The second case is the case of Stanislav Petrov in 83, who actually also did not use the immediate reaction while, while all indications, so-called indications, indicated that the Americans are bombarding the USSR. They were not, they were false signal. Even after the end of the World War, in 95, there was another case of the false alarm, totally stupidly happening, and President Yeltsin at that time actually helped. So we have to very seriously work on uh, uh, eliminating war as the most dangerous thing that exists. Coming again, remember your humanity and forget the rest. What is the rest? to which we concentrate is a set of false idols, including war, conquest, dominance, and of course, greed over production and so on. Uh, this is really a gross violation of the first of the Ten Commandments. One should not turn to false idols. In the program of our conferences of these two years, we have the word science. By science, I specifically mean the need for new ideas. Uh, these ideas could be half hooked, could be crazy, and so on. And I will conclude my talk by just expressing three such crazy ideas. One is, crazy idea number one, 
following what Anna said about European army, that would not do anything. It would be just uh, instead of three, four or five or six uh, uh, very powerful country, we need actually global UN force, which is so strong that it can uh, force everybody else to obey them. Okay, do we have any examples? Yes, this is as we do in the criminal affair. Uh, how do we take care of the criminals? Just by the police. So in this case, of course, I am arguing for the world police against the criminals. Who are the criminals? All those involved in war. You can say, of course, uh, that uh, those involved in wars uh, fall in two categories, the so-called aggressors and so-called uh, uh, fighting justified war, uh, wars. And as a matter of fact, throughout the, uh, the discussions in ethics, you see all of this. Uh, but our existence is much too important to actually try to make these differences. All those who are involved in war should be capable, we should be capable of uh, stopping them. And uh, as I said, it has to be the global UN force that is doing that. I realize that, of course, means, uh, as was mentioned also in a manifesto, a distasteful uh, reduction of the national sovereignty. But let's consider the question of sovereignty in what is its real meaning. And obviously today is a very, very different meaning than it had at the time of the Westphalian Treaty. So it's not the 17th century, it is the new world. And in the new world, we have precisely to take care that by sovereignty, we do not mean my right to dominate over you. Uh, as I said, this is the crazy idea number one. The crazy idea number two is who are the benefits, uh, who are those who benefit from war? The, any analysis shows that those who benefit from war are those that produce, sell, and disseminate weapons. And this is clear. I mean, they are those who are doing uh, providing weapons, and we kill each other by these weapons, they, the producer, earn enormous amount of money, don't care about people uh, killing each other, and uh, as a matter of fact, uh, use the war to test which weapon is better, mine or yours. Uh, elimination of all weapons is not an easy thing. Uh, Ambassador Duarte uh, led for a long time the disarmament committee, so he knows much, much more than I could even dream of knowing. But I think that uh, there is one argument that can be said, why total disarmament? Because the weapons that is sold to me today, will already tomorrow be obsolete. So I'm paying for nothing just to kill a person who really is not my enemy, who I do not have to kill in order to defend myself, is really totally unnecessary. And we have to eliminate weapons the production and the selling of weapons, both to 
the individuals and to the states. The third uh, crazy idea is concerning the Security Council. We heard a lot of criticism. They are all justified. We heard a lot of criticism on the veto power. But veto power, just like any power, means also an obligation. Those that have veto power are obliged to terminate the war immediately through negotiation. As the ne world negotiation means, is not the victory for any part. It has to be a compromise, something that can be done. And it is the responsibility of those who have the veto power to guarantee that. I'm not going into the question whether those five are the only one, or possibly Germany, Japan, India, Pakistan, and so Brazil should have also the veto power. But whoever has the veto power has an enormous responsibility of preventing the war, of preventing the suicide that humankind is doing. Thank you very much.